festival of the catacombs. In a few moments, you'll be entering the 800 meter long labyrinth of this huge ossuary. Paris copied the name catacombs from the ancient catacombs in Rome and Naples, where the Christians buried their dead in the first few centuries AD. The Paris catacombs were opened in the late 18th century to clean up the center of Paris, where the overfull cemeteries were posing a growing health risk. For 13 centuries, Parisians who died in 22 of the city's parishes and bodies from the hospital and mortuary were buried in the Cemetery of the Innocents, near what is now the Forum des Halles. But the available space was limited. From the 16th century onwards, charnel houses were built and the bones were removed to them from the overfilled graves so that these could be reused. The thousands of decomposing bodies piling up constantly in them encouraged the spread of disease. A late 18th century chronicler wrote, In this confined area, the lives and health of the inhabitants were in imminent danger of infection. Soup and milk went off in a few hours in the houses close to the cemetery. Wine turned sour when it was tapped, and the miasmas from the bodies threatened to contaminate the air. In May 1780, a mass grave cracked and overflowed into the cellars of the neighboring houses. After that, a parliamentary decree banned all further burials, until in 1785, Louis XVI finally decided to close down the cemetery and move it. When the decision was taken to clear out the Cemetery of the Innocents, Guillermo, the quarry inspector in charge of the reinforcement of the underground tunnels, was asked to find an appropriate site. He decided on the old quarries on the Montsouris Plain at Dombissoir, outside Paris. On the 7th of April, 1786, the catacombs were blessed and consecrated by the church authorities. The transfer of the bones could begin. It took 15 months in an unchanging ritual. Hearses crossed the city at nightfall, covered with a black veil, and followed by priests in surplices chanting the office for the dead. Each church had its own graveyard, and like the Cemetery of the Innocents, the other cemeteries in central Paris were also cleared. It took until 1814 to move the bones. Baron Osman briefly resumed the process in the mid-19th century for the major redevelopment. The bones were thrown down shafts altogether, in some places piled up to a height of 30 meters, with no distinction of birth. They're estimated to be the remains of over 6 million Parisians, including important historical figures such as Rabelais, Racine, Lully, Pascal, Danton and Robespierre, as well as Guillermo, the quarry inspector himself. Stop. Here is the Empire of the Dead. Erika de Toury was only 33 when he took over the supervision of the quarries from Guillermo in 1809. The catacombs did not escape the upheavals of the French Revolution. They were neglected, and the bones lay jumbled together in a damp and polluted atmosphere. The young engineer started to restore them and created a unique, romantic, and macabre setting for them. Sylvie Robin, chief curator. In 1809, Ericard de Turi had the amazing idea of transforming the ossuary, where bones had been piling up for more than 30 years, into one of the principal museums of Paris, and he created a macabre landscaped underground walk for visitors. The phrase is very important. It sets the tone because it says, stop, this is the empire of death. This is a phrase often engraved on the funerary inscriptions of antiquity, as it invites the passerby to take the time to reflect and think of the dead. And the empire of death is a more menacing expression. It is taken from a sermon by Bossuet, and it warns visitors that they are entering another world. This Alexandrine, a warning to the visitor, is the first in a long litany of maxims as you go along. They were chosen by Ericard de Turi himself. In his words, he wanted to 
break the sinister and dark monotony of this huge ossuary by inscriptions taken from religious writings, poets, and philosophers of all eras, and bring together their most beautiful sayings on our existence, its fragility, death, and finally the hope of another life. An idea that's as sweet, as necessary, as it's comforting for those who are mourning. Erika de Turi also had stone plaques carved inside the ossuary, from which you can identify where the bones came from and when they were moved here. This is the only tombstone you'll see in the catacombs. It used to be on the tomb of Francois Gélin, who died in 1821. She devoted her life to securing the release of a famous prisoner, Jean-Henri de Latude, from the Bastille. In an attempt to gain the favor of Louis XV's mistress, Madame de Pompadour, Latude arranged a fake attack on her in 1748, taking care to warn her of the danger in a letter. When the hoax was discovered, he was arrested and paid for this childish prank by being imprisoned without trial in various royal prisons for 35 years. He managed to escape several times, but was always recaptured. The rope ladder he used to escape from the Bastille on the night of the 25th to the 26th of February, 1764, is now on display in the Musée Carnavalet. When the catacombs were built, a sort of museum was set up at the Tomb Missoir Quarry. Tombstones, crosses and inscriptions from the cemeteries were displayed there if the families had not asked for their return. This short-lived museum disappeared during the revolution. Francois Gélin's plaque is all that remains of it. To listen to the next commentary, walk along the gallery to a supporting pillar surrounded by a large pile of skulls and shin bones that makes the whole thing look like a barrel. A bizarre event took place in this crypt between midnight and 2 a.m. on the 2nd of April, 1897. The participants had been sent the following invitation. You're invited to attend the religious and secular concert by famous musicians to be held in the ossuary of the Paris catacombs on Friday, the 2nd of April, 1897. Important notes. Entrance via number 92, Rue Darrow, from 11 p.m. To make sure that curious bystanders do not block the entrance, please do not have carriages stop at the door. This is a personal invitation. A journalist from Le Figaro, who had been invited, reported... We found several of our colleagues who had arrived a few moments earlier sitting on simple straw-bottomed chairs. People are certainly very chatty in the catacombs. Professor Poirier, holding a superb skull, was whiling away the weight by giving the captivated guests a fascinating lecture on craniology. There were a hundred people there altogether, including a few intrepid ladies. The clandestine concert was organized by some young people who found the idea amusing. A quarry engineer they knew had promised to turn a blind eye. At half past midnight, a 45-piece orchestra started the candlelit concert in the midst of skulls and shin bones. The program was specially chosen for the setting, Chopin's Funeral March. Danse Macabre by Saint-Saëns. And Beethoven's Funeral March from the Eroica Symphony. The entertainment ended around 2.30 a.m. Night carriages had even been arranged. The catacombs have fascinated the public ever since they were first opened, but only a privileged few were allowed in at that time. In 1787, one of Louis XVI's brothers, the future Charles X, came to see them with ladies of the court. It was not until the First Empire that they were first opened to the public. Erika de Turi himself escorted some of the curious visitors who crowded in. He had a black line drawn on the quarry ceiling to help visitors find their way. The Emperor of Austria, living in Paris as the victor, visited the catacombs in May 1814 after the defeat of Napoleon I, while the Russian regiments camped nearby were brought here by their officers. 
1860, the Emperor Napoleon III came with his son. The Prussian Prime Minister Bismarck visited during the World Fair in 1867, as did several important foreigners like Prince Oscar, the future King of Sweden. We also know that Erika de Turi set up a mineralogy exhibition in an adjoining gallery, displaying various curious minerals and fossils found in the quarries, as well as what was called a pathological exhibition. This was a collection of abnormally sized deformed bones, showing all the diseases that could afflict the human skeleton. Those two exhibitions were closed down at the end of the 19th century. The catacombs also inspired 19th century artists. In 1862, Felix Nadar, a leading photographer of his day, produced one of the first underground photographic reports.